Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be doing something that I've looked forward to for the entire year, and I look forward to every single year, and that is brewing the Christmas special for the year, the holiday special. This is the Winter Spiced Ale of 2022. We are going to be making a beer that is somewhat based off of an English old ale, um, which is an interesting style, but I'm actually targeting something a little bit lower ABV than your typical old ale. Um, this is going to fall more into the realm of a dark ESB with Christmas spices added on top. And the reason I'm choosing this style is because I want a rather sweet finish to actually bolster all of the spices that I'm adding in. Spices really do need a little bit of sweetness to stand out against, especially if you are adding as many spices as I am planning on adding in this particular brew. Spices can be kind of tricky because if you add a little too many, it can ruin the beer, but if you don't add enough, it can not even show up in the beer. So, so adding the right amount of spices is a very fine line, but at the same time, Balancing the spice with the sweetness is a critical part of making a holiday ale. So what we're looking for at the end of the day on this beer is a copper to light brown colored ale that has a really nice rich malt palette behind it to back up all of these spices that we're gonna add. And we want the spices to be the star of the show. So I'm picking a yeast that is not gonna attenuate too far. It's gonna leave a little residual sugar behind, but still make um, for a pretty tasty beer at the end of the process. I also wanna take this moment to show off the holiday holiday t-shirts, the holiday merch for this year. I do have Christmas sweaters for sale as well in the merch store if you're curious about that stuff. But uh, this is a 2022 release. Check it out if you like it. It's kind of a fun shirt. I like this one. It's a great way to support the channel if you feel inclined to purchase some merchandise to help us out. Anyway, back to the video. I'm hoping to evoke the feeling of either being in the kitchen while someone is baking some like special Christmas dish, like a gingerbread something, for example, or creating the feeling of having Glühwein, for example, German spiced wine during the holidays. That's a tradition for many as well. And I just wanna have that feeling in a beer without it being 9, 10% ABV. That's the goal. So before we jump into the recipe though, I would like to thank a few organizations for helping make this video possible. Firstly, Northern Brewer. Northern Brewer is a great place to get all the ingredients that you need for this batch of beer. They provided everything for me except for the spices. So big thank you to them for that. They also sell plenty of equipment and give you classes in order to be able to start home brewing. So check them out when you get a chance. Secondly, Clawhammer Supply, they make the system that I've been brewing on for the last two years now. They have both 10 and 20 gallon and 120 and 240 volt systems. Either combination of those is entirely possible. So check them out, um, check out their YouTube channel as well. I'm sure you know about that. So now let's jump into the recipe. We are gonna be starting out with 10 pounds of Maris Otter base malt. The Maris Otter is gonna provide a nice biscuity bready base and it's gonna have a nice chewiness, I think, that is gonna be really important for this particular beer style. Uh, I'm gonna to add to that half a pound of English light crystal malts. Um, now, I typically don't brew with crystal malt, but this one is actually kind of a special one because it creates this nice toffee flavor uh, that I think is gonna be really welcome in this beer style. And also, English crystal malt is pretty much superior to the 20, 40, 60, 80 basic crystal malts that you're used to. So, um, I would highly recommend if you need to use a crystal malt, use an English one. It's gonna be very rewarding. Lastly, we'll add a quarter pound of chocolate malt to the whole thing. Chocolate malt is gonna be added for color, but also for a little bit of a nutty, toasty, slightly roasty character. Um, and I think it's gonna help kind of make this a solid winter beer. Um, I'm hoping to end up with a color that is just a little bit lighter than your typical brown ale, and uh, that should give us a nice character. Now that is all for the malts, but we're not done with the overall fermentables. We are adding also in one pound of D45 candy syrup. This is a Belgian candy sugar syrup that is um, kind of on the lower end of the color spectrum. It's very, very reminiscent in the flavor of golden raisins and uh, kind of like a little bit of toffee character again. It's a nice add and I think it's gonna help a lot. And then lastly, we're adding in half a pound of wildflower honey. <laughs> um, this is actually the first time I've added honey to a beer, uh, which is interesting, but I think it's actually gonna be a really nice add. Wildflower honey has some nice residual flavors in it that I think once it all ferments out, it's gonna leave some really cool depth uh, and it's gonna add some complexity to the sugar profile of the beer. 
and um, I really do want that in there. Now the wildflower honey and the D45 candy syrup, that's not gonna get added until 10 minutes from the end of the boil, um, but you'll see that during the brew day. Now for hops, I'm only gonna be adding in just a few hops, um, just enough to balance the beer out and add a little bit of complexity, and I'm gonna be using East Kent Golding's, a nice, earthy, spicy hop that is just a classic in English beers, like basically the base that I'm working off of here. Um, I'm adding about 25 IBUs of East Kent Golding, so uh, one ounce at 60 minutes and one ounce at five minutes, uh, just to add that little bit of complexity. So here's what I'm adding for spices. I'm adding all of these within the last five minutes of the boil, with the exception of the vanilla extract, which will be added at the very end when I keg. So I'm starting out with five grams of whole cloves. Uh, this is potentially a little much for some folks, so feel free to dial it back or add more if you feel like it. I'm adding to that five grams of ground coriander, five grams of ground allspice, and four cinnamon sticks, which I've broken up a little bit to help incorporate their uh, addition to the boil. I'm also adding to this one whole ground nutmeg. Now the way I do this is typically put it over a zester and then zest it into uh, the bowl. If you've never used a real whole nutmeg before and ground it freshly, try it out because it will change your life. And then lastly, I'm adding in the zest of an entire navel orange. And lastly, like I said at the beginning, I'm adding one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract to the keg because I don't really have any vanilla beans handy right now, otherwise I would add vanilla beans in secondary for a little bit smoother flavor. For the water profile on the beer, I'm gonna be targeting a water profile that really accentuates the maltiness of this beer style, but also adds in a little bit of bicarbonate to buffer the pH because the little tiny bit of uh, roasted malt, chocolate malt, is going to probably drop that pH a little bit. So. Uh, my water profile target is 95 parts per million of calcium, 6 parts per million of magnesium, 18 parts per million of sodium, 127 parts per million of chloride, 81 parts per million of sulfate, 47 parts per million of bicarbonate. And in order to get that water profile, I'm adding in 3 grams of gypsum, 2 grams of epsom, 8 grams of calcium chloride, and 2 grams of baking soda to 8 gallons of distilled water for my strike water. All of those salts are going into the strike water. Um, and this water profile should give me a nice, rich maltiness, which is going to impact not only the flavor, but also the mouthfeel of the beer. I want it to be full-bodied, and I want that to come through. I want that maltiness to really be front and center, and that is important as a baseline for the spices, because if it's too dry and it, it, the maltiness is not really featured, then those spices are going to be overpowering. So I need to make sure that I strike a balance between the sweetness and the spices, otherwise this beer could get ruined pretty quickly. For our yeast, I'm gonna be using Lalamand Windsor Ale. I've not used this strain before, but as a classic English strain, it seems to be a nice medium to low attenuating strain, giving some nice residual fruity esters if you ferment it hotter, but otherwise being relatively clean if you ferment it lower. And that's really what I'm going for. I want something that's not gonna to attenuate too much. I want to have a nice residual sugar profile. Again, in line of what I talked about with the water profile, we don't want this to get too dry. Otherwise, the beer is gonna to be too strongly spiced. Uh, and so that's why I'm choosing this particular yeast strain. I'm gonna ferment it nice and low to keep it kind of clean. And I hope that works out in the long run. For our mash, this is the final component to keeping it nice and balanced. I'm mashing this with a single infusion mash, single temperature rest at 155 Fahrenheit on the very high end of the scale. That is gonna give me a nice blend between a full-bodied beer as well as a relatively sweet final gravity, um, which is gonna help create a good canvas for those spices, I hope. Um, this could backfire and it could be too sweet. I hope it's not the case, because if it is overly sweet and overly dessert-like, this is probably gonna ruin the beer. Because I'm adding those sugars and because I'm expecting this beer to dry out further than calculated, that's why I'm going with this higher mash temperature to kind of counteract that. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that this finishes somewhere between 10 
12 and 10 18 ideally 10 15 as a final gravity to give just enough sweetness to boost the spice profile without being overpowering or overly sweet so I'm really excited to brew this beer. Holiday beers are so much fun to make because you're balancing hops and spices and malts and all that good stuff. And I get to throw some fun ingredients in there. So I'm very excited for this brew day. Let's get it started. I added eight gallons of distilled water to my 10 gallon claw hammer supply 240 volt system. And I started to heat it up to the mash temperature. While it was heating up, I milled out all of my grain and I measured out all of my water salts and added those to the distilled water as it heated up. Once I reached the intended mash temperature of 155 Fahrenheit, I mashed in uh, with my entire grist and started to recirculate. After 10 minutes though, I took a pH measurement and I saw a relatively high, but still not really too worrisome pH of 5.58. Um, this is going to read high because it was measured hot. So the actual mash pH is gonna be a little bit lower. Uh, so it's not too much to worry about with this. After the mash had sat for about an hour, I stepped it up to the mash out step of 170 Fahrenheit and let it sit for 15 minutes. Then I pulled out the grain basket and let that drain for 15 more minutes. I also set the controller to maintain a temperature just below boiling during this time to avoid any sort of boil over while the basket was still over top the kettle. Once the basket was finished draining, I removed it and I set the controller to maintain 50% power, which is enough to keep a good rolling boil going. Once I reached the boil, I added my 60 minute bittering addition, which was one ounce of East Kent Goldings. I let the boil continue for 50 more minutes, and then at the 10 minute mark, I added in a Whirlflock tablet, as well as some yeast nutrient. Five minutes later, I added in a whole bunch of stuff. I started out by adding in my sugar additions. So that was the one pound of D45 candy syrup and the half a pound of wildflower honey. I got these nice and well dissolved and then I started adding in my spices at this time with the exception of vanilla. I added all these in, made sure they were mixed in nicely and then finally topped it off with my five minute hop edition, one ounce of East Kent Goldings. I let the boil continue for five more minutes and then I initiated a whirlpool and began to pile the tube into a nice cone at the center of the kettle. Once my whirlpool was done, as about 15 minutes later, I went ahead and started cooling it down to pitching temperatures, about 65 Fahrenheit, and I took an OG sample as I transferred to the fermenter. The OG I got was right on target at 1062. Once I had all my wort in the fermenter, I pitched my yeast and I left it to ferment. So for the fermentation on this beer, uh, it's going to be a little bit complicated. Um, typically holiday ales are best fermented with either English ale yeasts or Belgian yeasts, depending on what you're trying to make. Um, I prefer, I think, the English ale yeasts because they do make a little bit more round of a beer and a little bit more of a higher finishing gravity with a little bit more residual sweetness. Belgian yeast can really dry things out, but if you're going for a high alcohol holiday beer, Belgian yeasts really are the way to go. Um, so keep that in mind as you're designing your recipe. But for this particular beer, it's going to be an English ale yeast or Scottish ale yeast or an Irish ale yeast, depending on what you want to make out of it. Um, so some great options. So for some of the various manufacturers, you have options like I guess for Fermentus, SO4 is a great option. S33 is a pretty good option. 
uh, for Lalamand, Windsor Ale, London Ale, uh, Nottingham Ale, perhaps Nottingham might actually attenuate a bit far though, so be cautious when using that. Imperial has a bunch of good strains for this too. Pub is a good option, uh, Juice is a good option, Tartan for your Scottish Ale is a good option, Darkness is a good option, and also kind of like a left field option, but still a good English strain is Conan as well. Um, even though it's typically an IPA strain, it is a very good English strain. So for White Labs, WLP002, WLP004, 005, 006 and 008 are good options. So for Y yeast, uh, the 1968 London ESB is a good option. The 1318 is probably your best option, uh, but also see the 1098 British Ale and the 1028 London Ale. Uh, those are all good options for this beer. If you want to ferment this one under pressure, it's not a bad idea because it would help lock in a lot of the aromatics of the spices that you're gonna add during the boil um, that may be lost during fermentation due to off-gassing. So I've already brewed the beer and I've already put it in the fermenter um, and I'm thinking about it now and I'm like, maybe I should have pressure fermented that because that would have been a really good way to keep those aromatics in there because the spice aromatics are a very important part of the beer. However, I have added so many spices that it's entirely possible that they're gonna stick around anyway. And if I had locked them in, it could have been too much. I don't know, we'll see. Also consider using maybe a Kvike strain for this as well, depending on how fruity you want your beer to be. A Kvike strain is gonna get your beer done very fast in three to five days, but also you might get a little bit of a fruity ester, maybe some orange ester, especially if you use like something like Voss uh, for this beer. It's gonna give you this nice orange character, which can be very nicely complimentary for a spiced holiday ale. So. Plenty of good options out there to ferment this one with. So what I'm doing is I'm fermenting this one with the English Windsor strain. It is a nice, uh, relatively low attenuating strain, again, to give you that really nice, sweet malt base. Some of the other strains I've recommended may attenuate further than this one. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're designing your recipe. It's gonna take a bit longer to get done, about 10 to 14 days, uh, fermenting at about 63 Fahrenheit but it is going to keep my beer in balance. Um, and I think that's very, very important. So like I said, 10 to 14 days, about 63 Fahrenheit uh, will give me a relatively clean beer and uh, with a relatively medium attenuation, uh, which is really what I'm looking for here. The mouthfeel and the body of the beer should be relatively medium to full using this yeast, and I think it's gonna be a nice choice. So I will catch you guys in a few weeks when this thing has completed its fermentation and we're ready to taste it. So until then, cheers. The fermentation on this beer went really fast, actually. Although I didn't know it at the time, I reached the final gravity in four days of fermentation. I actually raised it up to 68 Fahrenheit after the first week to try and encourage a little bit more attenuation, uh, but it would not budge beyond 1018. Fermentation was very much finished at that point in time. So after letting it sit in the fermenter for a total of two weeks to make sure it had fully cleaned up and conditioned, at this point I transferred over into my keg I added in my vanilla through the use of a syringe and removing the little PRV ports on the keg. I find this is a very easy way to add things to your keg without opening it up fully, reducing risk of oxidation. I let the beer fully condition and carbonate over the course of a week, and then I finally poured it after about three weeks from brewing. The beer is called No Ale, and it comes in at 5.9% ABV and about 25 IBUs. So for the appearance of the beer, it is a really nice reddish brown color. Uh, it's got some residual haze. You can't really see through it, but you can kind of see shapes through it. So like my fingers are coming through, uh, but that's about it. For the head on the beer, it is a beautiful, like kind of creamy tan colored head. 
Uh, really, really nice structure on this one. It has some great lacing. It leaves a very thick layer on the surface. Although the overall head falls quickly, um, the, the layer that remains is quite nice and it's a great color contrast too. It's a nice dark amber colored beer. It's a very inviting looking beer too. So, so aromatics on this one are really governed uh, primarily by the spices. Um, so I get a lot of orange character in this one. Um, and I also get a lot of like a nutmeg um, and then some of the vanilla is coming through as well. Uh, don't really get any sort of yeast character, hop character, or, uh, or malt character coming through. Just pretty much the spices. And then moving in for mouthfeel now. Mm. Yeah, so the mouthfeel on this one is pretty much what I wanted. So this finished at 1018, so nobody should be surprised about this having a rather full mouthfeel. Um, it is a nice character though. It's not really like chewy necessarily, but it has a smoothness to it. It has a roundness to it. Uh, there's no real harsh edges at all. It's actually very similar to a wheat beer almost. Not quite, you know, not quite that creamy, I guess, but it's, it's still very full bodied. Um, and without the roastiness of a stout or a porter kind of grist, this has a different character and it actually suits it very well. As it is kind of based off of an English beer, I figured I might as well treat it like an English beer and uh, not carbonate it to a very high degree. So that works out very, very nicely though because it brings out a lot more of that malt character and really helps the beer express itself nicely. You don't get as much aroma from the spices because of that, but it really comes out in the flavor, um, which we might as well talk about now. Mm. <laughs> oh, this is real good. This is exactly what I wanted out of this beer. <laughs> the flavor on this is just so complex and so enjoyable. This beer absolutely nails the like, evoking the feeling of being in the kitchen while somebody's baking like a Christmas pie or a Christmas pudding or something like that. It is so rich and just has this wonderful toasty malty character that is then uh, bolstering these spices and the spices come out in such a beautiful way. Um, this is an absolute joy to drink. It is really giving me serious Christmas vibes right now. I'm very happy to report that the balance is there. Even though this beer is on paper very sweet, it's balanced, it's not overly sweet because you have spices to back it up, you have some hops in there to back it up as well, and it doesn't become sickly sweet. It is, you know, definitely a sweeter beer. It's definitely a lot sweeter than the cider they also have on tap. Um, in fact, it's like the polar opposite of the cider, but it has a good balance though because there's more stuff in there to really fight that sweetness, and it, it works really, really well. I am also really happy to say that there's no overspicing uh, on this. I added a ton of spices to this beer and I was very concerned that I was going to overdo it, especially with the cloves, but actually the cloves aren't even really coming through at all. Um, if they are, it's a background note. It's really dominated by the other spices. Uh, and so the spice character comes through. It's not a one-dimensional aspect of the beer though. It's, it really mixes well with the malt flavors which also come through and it is just a joyous marriage. Um, this is a very, very nice beer. The malt flavors are very toasty. Uh, there is a nice caramel sweetness that's there. Um, just a note of it, not really an overpowering sweetness. There's a great biscuity base to this. Um, it's very Full. It's very uh, substantial and it, it's an absolute rock solid base for the spices. I don't really get any sort of hop character coming out of this. It's entirely possible though that the EKG is just blending into these nicely. Um, but the spices are really there. So I get a ton of vanilla um, and it's not, it doesn't feel fake to me, which is really nice considering I used an extract. Um, I tend to shy away from that sort of thing, but it actually worked pretty well in this. Um, I wouldn't use any more than I did. <laughs> um, and also you get a lot of that citrus character coming through the orange peel, the coriander contributing to that. Um, it really did uh, come through in a very nice way. I do get a lot of nutmeg 
and Nutmeg is just such a wonderful character in a beer like this. Unfortunately, I'm not picking up any cinnamon. Um, I get a little bit of the allspice, but I don't get any cinnamon at all. Um, and that's something I would like to see more of. I get some of the golden raisin character from the candy syrup, and there's a, maybe a hint of the honey in there. It's not really prominent. It's hard to pick out. And if you didn't tell me it wasn't brewed with honey, I wouldn't be able to find that out. But there is a nice kind of je ne sais quoi uh, sugar character in this that is very different and pleasantly so than other beers uh, that I've made with purely barley malt. Um, there's a nice drying note on there too from the chocolate malt that dries out the palate just at the very end, which encourages you to take another sip. All of the ingredients in this beer work together very well. And I'm very pleased to see that. If I had a fireplace, this is the kind of beer I would drink in front of the fireplace. Uh, with like the Christmas tree in the background, with you know snow falling outside and all of those wonderful kind of Hallmark movie type things. This is the kind of beer I'd be drinking in that circumstance. It is perfect for this time of year and it absolutely uh, connects the dots for everything. The best part too is that it was done only in a few weeks. It didn't require a long aging period like you would need for like an eight percenter. So it is absolutely possible to make this with like two weeks left until Christmas um, to be able to serve this to people when they come over for Christmas dinner, for example, because this would go great with a Christmas dinner. Um, and need I mention, it tastes exactly like a Christmas dessert, so it would definitely go well with a, you know, a appropriate holiday dessert as well. So overall, an absolutely wonderful success. I'm so happy I made this beer because this is, of the Christmas beers that I've made, this is definitely like my, maybe in my top two, I think. It's really, really good. It, it, hard to compete with that Christmas Weizenbach that I made last year. That beer is absolutely outstanding and I will be delivering an aging report on that on the channel for my final video of the year in my year end wrap up. So stay tuned for that. This one is pretty much just as good as that one. Uh, with much, much less aging time required. So for potential improvements on the beer, there always are gonna be some. Um, I think for me, the chief ones really come down to spices. I would use maybe uh, a third less vanilla extract, so that means putting in only one teaspoon of it uh, instead of a teaspoon and a half. Uh, that would be enough for it to be noticed, but not prominence, and I think that's really where the vanilla flavor belongs in this mashup. Secondly, I would definitely wanna see more cinnamon in there maybe a pinch of ginger. Uh, that would be kind of a nice flavor as well. Uh, just kind of blend in with everything. But otherwise, this beer is awesome and I would not change a thing about it. it it's absolutely perfect for this time of year. It has all of those wonderful Christmas vibes and makes me very happy uh, to enjoy it. It's actually a really nice sipping beer, uh, despite the fact that I've already finished up half a pint of it in the course of talking about it. So I really do hope you have a wonderful holiday season uh, this year. No matter what you're celebrating, I hope you can enjoy this type of beer and make it for yourselves. This will probably be my final brew of the year. Um, I'm actually taking a dry January next year, so you won't see another Graden Glass video on the channel for a while. But we still have plenty of good content coming up in the next several weeks and throughout January as well. Please, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Hit that subscribe button as well if you haven't already, and feel free to comment down below with your thoughts. I really do appreciate reading all the comments. It's a lot of fun to me. If you want to support the channel, once again, I'm going to plug this t-shirt. It's uh, available also as a hoodie as well if you're uh, you know, living in a colder climate as well. There's plenty of other interesting designs in the merch store as well. I'm sure something will pique your interest, so please do check it out. Good way to support me. I get a small amount of profit from that. I also have a Patreon if you want to give that way a channel memberships option and uh, if you feel inclined you can hit that super thanks button as well as a great way to help support me quickly and easily and I really do appreciate it. I also have an Amazon store where you can pick up some brewing gear that I recommend that I use in my videos as well as check out what I make my YouTube videos with. I'm also active on more than just YouTube. I have an Instagram and I also have a Facebook page as well so both of those are just at the apartment brewer so check it out if you want some more frequent content updates. And uh, last but not least, if you're still here, thank you for watching all the way to the end. I know these videos can get kind of long sometimes. I appreciate you sticking with me to the end. It means a lot to me. And so I'm not gonna chug this because it's just a too full body to do so with, but I do want y'all to know that I really appreciate it for watching all the way to the end. And this one most certainly goes out to you guys. So until the next one.
Cheers and Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, all that good stuff.